Okay, it's pretty risky giving me a gavel, but I'm going to call the July 12th meeting of the Design Review Committee to order and uh, let the members of the committee and the staff introduce themselves. I'm Eric Gilbertson. I'm vice chair of the committee. I'm Martha Smirsky. I'm a member. Benjamin Cheney, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Now you, you need to review the procedures, correct? Yes. Yep, I'm gonna do a little procedures review here because we do have some people attending um, remotely. And I see a 2796986 number. Uh, can you unmute and let me know who you are? Um, to unmute when you're calling in on the phone, you wanna do star six. Okay, I am gonna go forward, I guess, with my remote meeting procedures while we're waiting to hear from our 279 number. Um, hold on, let me go back to the screen. Of course we can't, hold on. Yeah, 6986. Okay. Sorry, Jason. And I'm sorry, what did you say his last name was? No. Okay. That oh, way, if he does speak up, it helps with the um, meeting minutes. Okay. So, sorry for the delay, folks. All right, so, um, oh, it shows my whole screen. Hmm. Sorry about that. So this is also for people who are watching via Orca Media. Um, so for this, woo, goodness gracious. All right, I'm having all sorts of problems today. Let's try this again. I've been doing this for over a year and I've never had this many issues with sharing my little screen. It's the hybrid system. We uh, hadn't to come in and all did Zoom <laughs> and it'd been just fine. How did that get so big? Goodness. All right. Um, we're not gonna be able to do it as a presentation. We're just gonna do this. Sorry, I'm slowing us down. All right, so anybody watching from home, if you wanna actually participate in the meeting because you're hearing about an application that you're interested in, you can use the link that shows here. Um, my mouse is not working, so link here, um, or you can call into the meeting at 929-205-6099 and use this meeting ID to log in. If you're trying to log in and you're having problems, please email me. I do have my email up. Um, if anybody is having um, problems once they're in Zoom and having technical problems, please use the chat function, but please keep that chat function to just troubleshooting or logistics questions. If you have any questions or comments about an item on the agenda, please raise your hand if we have you on video or you're here in the room um, or by using the raise hand button on your toolbar. Um, for anybody on the phone, you can press star nine and that'll show a little hand on our Zoom screens so that we'll know you have your hand up. Um, you can also just unmute and state your name during a, a break in the conversation if nothing else is working. And then the chair will recognize you when it's your time to speak. Um, if anybody from home is trying to look at the meeting materials, they can use this link here. 
Um, and just a note that because we have offered Zoom as a way to access the meeting, if the public is unable to access the meeting um, and we find out about it, because I'll be getting emails um, that they can't get in and nothing I do gets them in, then we'll have to continue to the meeting to a time and place certain. I'll now hand this back over to the chair. Okay, thank you, Meredith. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? I so, move to approve the agenda. I'll second. And I will vote for it. So it's three to nothing, mm -hmm. unanimous approval of the agenda. Uh, the chair has no comments. So here we go to 41 State Street, Over Lake Park, and who is... Uh, representing the installation of the poster on the side of the building. Hello, I'm Just, uh, Hitzig with the Montpelier Public Art Commission. Okay. And uh, can you just explain exactly what you're doing and do you have a presentation on the computer or? I don't have a presentation, uh, Kevin submitted submitted materials for the okay applica application but um this is the state street poster um I, right that's what we're talking about so yep. we have two applications oh okay, yes it's so this is the state street. 41 state street poster yep. um what, what business is at 41 state street oh uh, that's the um the tea shop the tea shop the north branch tea shop the tea, okay the cafe that and it's the wall facing the river that we're talking about. Okay. Um, what we would like to do is install a poster like the one that's on the Onion River Outdoor Building, the one that's done the, the three photographs by Elliot Bird. It's printed on a, a fabric, like a Tyvek fabric that's used for billboards. Um, but what we want to do is install it, another image on that building. In the same style. I mean, the same the same way, using the same material, the same methods. Would you like me to share screen? It'll be on Zoom, and it'll be up there. Um, to share the application materials. Yeah, that'd be that great. Help. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yes. Now this is going to make the Zoom image of us a little tough, but members will be able to see that a little better. So and these are just representative pieces. Oh, right? well, that, that's the actual, what we did is we asked for proposals for installing art on buildings downtown. And we selected a couple of images for, for doing this. And these, this, is one of the, this is one of the applications that we approved. Um, and so we would like to install that image on that building, either in, the, in one of those two places. Oh, so but they're both not going up. No, just one. Okay. Just one. Um, and what are the A's and B's for? Uh, oh, side? just, yeah, the one location or the other location. Okay. Do you have a preference as to which location you would? I think the B location is more, it's, it's a little bit more space. Um, but I'm not, I'm not exactly sure if it's, might be, um, yeah, it might be a little bit more, might be a foot difference in, in width. Yeah. Is this rigid at all? What's that? Is it rigid at all? No, no, it's a fabric. It's like a Tyvek fabric, okay. polyeth um, an ethylene fabric, right. but it, it's, it's not put on anything, right? Well, it would be on a stretcher, a, yeah. a two by four stretcher. Okay. And the anchors would go, see there's, there's um, information there, but the anchors would go into the mortar and that would hold the, the stretchers away from the building. So it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be really on the building itself, it would be sort of a little bit off and held by the anchors. And how, how long do they, uh, are they planning on leaving them up? Well, it's a temporary installation. Um, that material, wouldn't last more than three years. It's probably more like a two year installation. Our plan is to rotate images 
with using the same anchors. So we would we would install the anchors into the mortar. And after a two year period, when the material is starting, before it starts to degrade, we'd replace the image and put an, a, another image in that, that location. Rob, I thought I understood you to say that these are photographs. Oh, they, they um, no, like no, Elliot's, Elliot Berg's piece on the Onion River Outdoor okay. building is a photograph, because but that's is... the option of, of doing a painting, mm -hmm. any kind of art, you can blow up the image and print it on that fabric. So it could be a photograph, it could be a painting that's imaged, it could be a graphic that's done on the computer and anything, but as long as the um, quality of the image are good enough, you could blow it up to that size. And this is the representation of the image that you're contemplating? Yes. Anybody else have any questions? I mean, I don't, not that it, it matters here, but I assume you're putting this up with some sort of lift from the sidewalk. Right, exactly. Yeah. We, it's, we, we that's what we do. Just use. make sure you're near the microphone. Oh yeah, sorry. We use the same lift that we're gonna use. We use for installing the mural on that back side of the rec center. Oh, yeah, yeah, which is beautiful, by the way. Nice Thank job. You. Thank you. We're very happy with it. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Uh, Can I ask a, just a sure. clarifying thing, just because I, I've Absolutely. been in discussions about this? So, just two things. Uh -huh. um, so, is this uh, this is a request for the alter the options of A or B, depending on where things could be placed, right? Because there's a question of whether or not the lift can get out to be safely, right, over the river? Um, or is it more of a sizing issue? I think it's a sizing issue. I okay. I mean, I, I, Ward Joyce, who has experience with that lift, says it wouldn't be a problem getting to that location okay. in I the middle. I would think it would be. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you're hoping for the, you to have the option of A or B. Right. And then if you could, and then was it A or B? And then if there was an installation where it was both, where you wanted to use both, is that what you wanted as well? Or just A or B and that would be where these would be I think we would just want inserted. one, we would want one image at a time. We wouldn't okay. want to put two images there at the same okay. time. If, yeah. And then this is, is this approval for Images there, no matter what they are within that size area, right? You can switch them out before without having to come back here as long as it is actually public art, right? Right. Okay. Right. That's the, that's the idea. And the plan is to, for us to approve either area. Yes. Okay. Just make sure you get close to that. How, how many anchors are you intending to put in? Um, I'm not the one that's done these installations before. Ward Joyce on our commission has done it. Um, I assume there's two to three on the bottom and it must be at least four vertical. Might be five vertical. I don't, I'm not sure exactly, but he's, that's what he's, he did for the installation. And this, this is no bigger than the installation that's on the Onion River Outdoor Building. And that's been there for six years. Um, I don't know exactly how many he used for that. So, there's, there's so like a dozen or 15 anchors. Um, so it's six. I'm looking yeah. for an yeah. approximate number. Yeah, 16 is probably, okay. probably, probably 12 to 16 is, but more likely 16. And uh, okay, I would uh, suggest that we put a condition on the permit that the when this is taken down that there the either the holes be filled. I think sometimes it might be better to put the bolts in and leave the anchors right where they are. What do you think, Ben? Versus pulling them out and then yeah. then regrouting or something. Yeah. Uh, well, by looking at these anchors, it felt like then you would have all these stainless steel kind of um, shiny, spots. shiny spots that I would not exactly knowing how they're going in. I'd probably inclined to try and I assume they're a wedge anchor or they're some sort of in there with some sort of adhesive. Uh, it's a 
um, I'm pretty sure it's a lead anchor mm -hmm. that the stainless steel would go into. And the plan would be to take, when you take them out to probably um, just use caulk is what uh, Ward, Ward talked to the historic preservation group about this mm -hmm. when he when he got approval for the on your outdoors space yep. and he, he said he would just caulk the holes if he pulled the anchors out yeah um but we could do route or something else if that was what was more appropriate yeah i th i think pulling the anchors out and filling filling the the hole with the appropriate thing is the right thing to do I don't know what that appropriate thing right. is, but right. having all those stainless yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. things on the side of the yeah. building seems weird. Yeah, yeah, that would, that's and especially because I doubt they're all going to go in perfectly. They're going to be at right. mismatched heights. Yeah, we, we wouldn't leave them just yep. sitting there without taking them out. Yep. Uh, are there any questions or co comments from the public? Hearing that now, I've got a form to fill out. Who's and the artist, Rob? What? what was it? Who's the artist? Um, she's an art teacher at U32. Um, Chartrand is her last name, and first name was. Uh, Sorry, Christine, right. maybe it's Christine. Sounds sure. Right. Um, is that an application? Yeah, an application. I'm sorry. The artist. Name of the Chartrand artist. Chartrand oh. is the last name. I might be, it might be Elizabeth Chartrand or it might be. Uh, Chartrand. Chartrand. Hey, Chartrand. At the top of this page. Ah, uh, okay. Yep. Thank you. It was a random and, question. And your intention is to kind of keep this going and ro rotate it? Mm -hmm, exactly. That's, I, the, that's uh, the idea. Um, yeah, it's it's very inexpensive to get the these printed. And it's not a, it doesn't last a long time. But if you could do it inexpensively to get these printed, it could really very, be a very dynamic installation that changes regularly and be very interesting for the downtown. Uh, I uh, I have some questions about large art on the side of a historic building, mm -hmm. but uh, as long as it's reversible, yeah, it's um, completely way. reversible, and yeah, it's a temporary installation. Okay, I've got the uh, all projects criteria to fill out, and for historic structures, uh, there's uh, three: uh, the removal of historic materials or alteration of features shall be avoided. Uh, it's not going to do that character defining features and construction techniques or examples craftsmanship the characters will be preserved I, that's fine any treatments that cause damage to historic materials included but not limited to physical treatments such as sandblasting shall not be approved I, I think it meets all those criteria so I would say it's acceptable uh, with the condition that if it's removed, the holes be filled. Right. Yep. Uh, the next one, existing buildings shall be recognized a physical record of their time, place, and use. That's acceptable. Proposed landscaping is not applicable. Location and appearance of all utilities. You're not going to do any lighting or anything, are you? Yeah. That's not applicable. Well, we, staff's already done that. Oh, nice. <laughs> I tried to help. <laughs> yeah, I know. Alteration <laughs> of buildings and, and so that uh, a whole page of things that are uh, 
uh, not applicable views of the state house parcels on Gulf River and shall be oriented so the riverfront is really not not acceptable height. If you took down to 12. Rhythm <laughs> and roof shape, not applicable. Architectural features shall not be limited to cornice, shutters, fan lights, and tables are trim and molding. Uh, you're not going to cover any of that stuff up, so that's acceptable. And then roof drainage systems, not acceptable. Signage removal, outdoor lighting fixtures, not, not acceptable. Not applicable. Not applicable. I'm sorry. I don't think there's any other of our standards or criteria that apply to this one. Right. Do a scan, but right. there are just a few that actually apply to this one. But I have to put them all on the sheet on the form that you're going to take a look at and sign okay. after Eric does. The recommendations. I'm the recommendation to be there should be a condition that. Holds be filled with appropriate material. On removal. Okay. Any other comments, questions? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Three to nothing. It's a date today. Night night. Okay. Going all the way over there. Wow. <laughs> So, Rob, you may as well just sit back down and I'll wait to give you the whole spiel and everything until we get to both of them. Okay. Great. Exactly. Got it. Nice. You don't have to try and get it to me the next day anymore. <laughs> next is uh, 16 Main Street installation of interactive art experience acrylic panels. You do the thing up on. I can. All right. Oh, hold on. Let's see what way I need to orient it once I get to the pictures. All right. So I guess zoom it around. Sorry, it only lets me do it clockwise. That's a good. Tell me where you want it, Rob, just to start with and then go to maybe the site plan. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. You want to give an introduction okay. to okay. what you're doing? Yeah. So the idea is we got a, we got an application from Mike Turner um, and Kate, sorry, I forgot her last name, but um, they're with Arcana um, Workshop Studio in Barrie. And what they, want to do is take these acrylic panels and have um, dyes flowing across them, different color dyes. So each panel will be different, but they'll all be organically colored. They'll be organic colors flowing through them. And they would be set on concrete bases. They would, the bases would actually be in the ground, so you wouldn't see the, the concrete bases, but um, they would so they'd be about six feet high, about, I think two and a half feet wide, but these acrylic panels would be, um, you could walk around them and there'd be about six of them. And where are they going? I well, we would like to place them in that new park across the street on Main Street, right next to the drawing board. Okay. Oh, the mound. Yeah. Where yep. the old m, m beverage was. Exactly. Yep. So, um, Basically, creating an interactive sculpture 
experience yep. in that location. And this sounds with concrete, it sounds like it intends to be permanent. Well, no, this is a temporary installation as well. Um, because it's not it's not really not a it's not a, a big money investment. It's this is it's very minimal in terms of the total dollars. So the frames around them is going to be wood and that'll degrade over time. And it's not I'm not sure how long the panels themselves would last, but um, it's, it, it's, it's planned as a two year installation, basically to see how it works. You know, if, if it is super successful, we might do something more permanent in the future, but that's a whole nother story. Um, we might do something different, but um, basically the idea behind the, the um, RFP that we had issued back in January was that we wanted to throw a, a little bit of money in a lot of different places and see how they worked for temporary installations. And then, you know, maybe we'd have some one thing or two things or three things that were success, successful, but we'd, you know, try to make it more permanent if it was very successful. And if it wasn't that successful, we could move on and do something else. But um, this, this the idea behind this was it was a temporary installation. Well, my definition of temporary is anything short of forever. So short, shorter than what? Anything short of forever. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I think that uh, okay. what uh, I would like to do is ask you to come back to design review and, and renew the permit if you go beyond that. Does that, does that work? Beyond the two years? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's I, fine. We'll that's... Give, give you a permit for two years. Okay. And, I mean, what I hate to see is stuff that that deteriorates and, and right is right no yeah that's yeah you guys don't want either no but, uh, no no we, we're not going to let things just sit there and definitely deteriorate that's, that's that sounds point. interesting yeah it, it'll be it's dynamic and exciting and um, I think it'll really get people involved and want to interact with it so people people want to see how the colors change with the light and looking through and seeing other people through the panels. It'll, I think it'll be very interesting. You can go behind it with a flash. Yeah, you could, yeah, you could do it and do it at night with lights and yeah. Rob, I have some concern about the concrete footings. Uh -huh. Are those gonna be in ground? Yeah, that was the plan. Yep. And you're intending to leave those permanently? No, no, if we're taking the piece out, the concrete bases would come with it. Okay, so those are part of the temporary. Right. Okay. I have, a, are you done? Sorry. Yeah, I'm done. Uh, I mean, I have a lot of faith in, in Arcana and I think the work that they do is really pretty, pretty unique and pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Without seeing, seeing these renderings, I have some concerns about the stability of the pieces based on like the public being able to kind of pull on them and then, right. Uh, and I realize these renderings are not actually how they're going to get constructed but and i don't really know what my guidance is here but um we were, i guess it's based yeah, in that I, we, we, I were, we were hoping to stake them down as well so that wouldn't be just be the base but also put stakes in it to hold the bases you could get, 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 give some more security to the bases yeah i mean i'm imagining well no i mean i feel like i'm imagining there's three-ish bags of concrete per thing poured into a rectangle that you're going to dig out of the ground and then stuff that in there. And then it's the connection between the sign, or I'm calling it a sign, the panel uh -huh. to the concrete and just its ability at six feet to be able to have somebody pull that over. Uh -huh. um, just the orientation of the that concrete mass is not going the best direction to be able to right right uh resist right. that overturning moment right right but again i mm -hmm. i have faith in mike turner and and arcana they've done a lot of interesting things and mm -hmm. successfully so i believe they know what they're doing mm -hmm. these renderings don't show how i imagine it's actually going to be created do you have any uh, recommendations as to what we should do to make it a little more stable in that way to put something that was wider? Yeah, I mean, I don't just 
something that showed a little bit more dimension or I don't know that I need to see it, but some real consideration to how much weight needs to be down low. And then the connection between, I mean, I see it spaced off. So it's, and wooden miter joints that are drawn here, or whether they're going to get, uh, you know, domino together and have a much better connection or how they're going it, to it just feel like it, it isn't a, what I'm seeing here is a, is a really strong structural thing that the public would be able to like grapple with. And right. I worry about something like that getting I, yeah, I, falling I think, apart. I, I thought about if, if you grow some heavy rebar into the ground and then pour the concrete around it. That, that could help certainly, yeah. but there's just uh, something that helps prevent some of that yeah, as well as yeah once you get up high it's pretty right. easy to topple the that concrete face was a little wider mm -hmm. that would help too yep so these are things to consider and i'm certain again yeah i want to reiterate i have a lot of right respect for those guys and feel right. like they know what they're doing so yeah. Yeah, I'm happy. I, I'll, I mean, if you if you want to leave it to us to to work out the finals, I, I mean, I'll. Or if you want me to come back with more specific drawings, we can do that too, or more specific ideas. But um, I, yeah, I understand what you're saying. And yeah, I mean, the, the safety aspect isn't really so much design review purview, um, but I do know that. Um, I know that this was going through as well, the river hazard for Audra to issue the permit on that. So I think maybe it's just something that if you can get our office a few more details, then it just makes sense to have that in the file okay. um, as to, you know, because it may be that they were waiting to figure out the exact details of how they were going to anchor it till they got confirmation on some other yeah. information. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, I would just get that information to, to me and Audra, um, especially because any tweaks to how it's all anchored she's probably going to need to know as well the specifics of how it's all anchored together to make sure that you know in a flood event those aren't ripped off from the from the um, right. concrete anchors as right. well right then that way you don't need to come back here okay right thank you uh, i'm uh thinking make about... sure you're near the microphone eric oh <laughs> <laughs> sorry the uh Putting a two-year condition and the condition if they get damaged, you're responsible to repair them. And the suggestions of, uh, that I made of heavy re-rod going down into the soil, you know, like a few a few feet, you just drive in with a hammer and pour the concrete around it. It's not a yeah, yeah. not a big deal. Right. Uh, yeah, and, that one might be an option. Yeah, and a, and I'm going to put a such as. Awesome. And and a wider base, so there's more, le more leverage. Uh, yeah. To hold the it. counter counteract leverage. Yeah. Anybody that's uh, on, want to make a comment? Everybody we have on and here in the room is either part of the meeting, recording the meeting, or. Applicants. Okay. And nobody has a hand raised, so we're good. I still got a form for 41 State Street. This is 16 State Street. Oh, so actually, I may have accidentally given you two. Sorry about that. Yep. I had a duplicate. I can do two just as easy as one. <laughs> 16 Main Street. Yes, there um, you go. I think for uh, new construction, it's acceptable. Building should be recognized as uh, just not applicable. Anybody has any objection to this, just stop me. Proposed landscaping should be compatible with the neighborhood at the site. That's I don't know what this is landscaping or not. I, I, left, I, le 
I also left that open because I wasn't sure if there was going to be any landscaping with this. It wasn't clear. There's no it's lighting or anything with it. No. Unless somebody shows up with a flashlight. <laughs> and then the rest of the, let's see, we've got location, alterations to buildings, views of the state house dome, or that's not applicable. All the rest of these criteria, I don't need to read them. No, you don't need to, need to meet all the ones that I already. I just the last one, number 16, because this is That's kind of a site furnishing. Site fur kind of a site furnishing. Site furnishings, including fencing, seating, and other types of site furniture. Yeah, just to, the it just has to be considered. Obscure, key architectural patterns, mechanical. Patterns. That's all acceptable. I am going to put in. Uh, Two years. Return to DRC. Stand. Permit. And that uh, applicant responsibility for any repairs or maintenance. And that uh, so, uh, provide measures to improve the stability. installation such as a wider base rerun driven into the ground. Okay. All in favor? I'm a yes. Yes. No one wants the exercise. Thank you. So, so um, we should get have the permits ready in the next day or two. Um, and should we just pass them to Kevin? Should we email yeah. you? Pass them to Kevin? Yeah. Okay. And then um, the you know the permits will have will be the permit, and then there'll be the notice of permit on a blue card. That blue card will need to be posted at the sites where the installations are going to go somewhere in public view. So the one on State Street could probably go in the, the front door window, maybe that would be protected from the weather. Um, the one across the street here, I would say somehow put it in like a Ziploc baggie and tack it to a post or something in the parcel. I know that's a little tough because you're like, well, how long is it going to stay there? But I don't know what else to do in a vacant lot. <laughs> there's, there's not a whole lot of great ways to protect it there. Um, and actually have it on the parcel. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Rob. Okay. 14 State Street, Vermont Rental Solution. Shannon, you are up. Thank you for your patience. 
Sure, absolutely. <laughs> well, we wanted to make sure everybody could hear it, even those on the in the audience here. <laughs> That's good. Uh, Shannon, you want to uh, just talk about your project a little bit? I will either you could share your screen if you want want to, or I can share the application here. Um, yeah, you could go ahead and share if you don't mind. Not in the least. I will get down to where it shows the sign. Uh, so I am opening a, a, a deli um, at 14 State Street. Um, and uh, my applications are to hang up two signs um, that say the name of my business, um, which is Anna. There's, so there's the the projecting sign. I'm just showing that right now. And that's a, doesn't quite show what you're looking at. Hold on. Let me see if I can get there's the good one. Yes. So um, they're both uh, the same sign made by the same, same uh, manufacturer. Uh, but the the one that's um, protruding from the building is just a, a mini size of this one, and that's a photo of the actual sign. So this is the sign that would go on the building. If that's, if that's that one right there. Yes, and you have, there is a picture of the building um, up higher. Yep. Yeah. So it would go in the middle of the, uh, yes, right here. What is the sign made of, Shannon? Uh, it is 12 gauge um, galvanized steel. Mm -hmm. Painted black or is it a, a metal it's, color? It's white. The sign is white? It's the color that you can see. Yeah, Yeah, because the, 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 um, the sign area there has already been painted black by the property owner. He did that consistently on the multiple sign band areas mm -hmm. he has on that property. Um, so that's already black. Okay. Yeah, it's brown. And the oh, is it brown? Is brown, yeah. Chocolate brown, <laughs> painted exterior. Oh, chocolate brown. My bad. So the sign is um, powder coated and it's white. And if you if you scroll down to the actual sign, you'll see that. That is the actual color of a sign. But it's just the letters are cut out, right? You're just applying. Make sure you bring your things on. Just the letters. <laughs> so you're, uh, what you're showing there is a back, is a background, not a mounting board, right? That's the floor. <laughs> That's the floor. Yes, you're, yes, you're correct. It's yeah. just the letters. Yes, the letters are cut out. Oh, okay, I see. Yes. And then, and then you're using the holes that are in those, in the E and the N and the A for yes. nails Six. or screws to be able to. Uh, the hardware actually came with the sign and that is, there's a photo of it right there, yeah. Oh, I see those. Those are standoffs. Those things yeah. that the, I yeah. see. Showing. This yeah. is gonna. This is gonna sit in. That sign is gonna be projecting away from the building. There's gonna be about an inch or so behind the sign. Half an inch, yes. So the manufacturers of the sign also um, sent the hardware with it. So it's designed to to go with the sign. And the projecting sign, is that also cut out letters? That's fine. Shannon? Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, yes, it's exactly the same. Yes, yes. It's just a smaller version. And then I, I assume you're going to paint the heads of the nails, or they're already painted, maybe? Uh, I have them right here. If they're not, yeah. I 
they're really, really small. <laughs> I don't think you're gonna see it from like the street. I believe that. But I can paint them. If they show, I'll certainly paint them. Uh, any lighting? I uh, guess the landlord has lighting that he just installed on the building. That's um, was here. That is part of the. Yes, it's in the. If you flip, you go up. I think there's a picture that shows that where the sign is placed, and there's lighting that um, was before. I've got it up there. There okay. are snacks. The, the the landlord had put for all of his sign band areas. He had those goosenecks put in earlier this year. I came through here. Anybody else have any questions? No. Hearing none. We'll give a shot at the criteria. It says signs in the design control district. Uh, the sign, the size, location, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior signs will be compatible with the building and structures of the site. I would say that's acceptable. Where appropriate signing shall respect the original sign placement in the sand bayons, acceptable. The building has multiple tenants. There shall be consistency in the placement of signs among all the signs. I would say that's acceptable. It's recommended sign placement be centered over building entries. really can't be, can it? Um, I mean, it's in the middle of the sign band. Yeah, it can't really, it's yeah. close enough. Oh, it's like, yeah. I mean, it's it's over the window. I'm just going to say it's centered on the sign band. Yeah. It would look weird if it was off to the size of the sign. Next one, not this one still applicable. Um, on. You're not oh, going into the mortar joints. Right. I only I only give you one recommendation for them, and there's two signs, right? There's the projecting sign and the wall sign. So I don't know if you want to the, the projecting sign looks like it's centered over the entrance. Where's yes. the wall sign? Okay. So maybe just sorry about that. This is my bad. Centered on sign band, projecting sign over entrance. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> and this one, the, the blade sign is, this is the hardware that's holding yeah. it. Yep, and it showed, if you flip again, there's the um, S. If you flip again, there's yeah. S hooks and yeah. the chains to hang from that. It's but same, it's basically the exact it's, same thing. It's the thing. exact same thing, just hanging. Yep. Sign design, color, topography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate. I think that's acceptable. Sign support structures shall be compatible with the building architecture and must not be overly complex or dominant. Acceptable. I think fixtures on facades for start. No, those are already, it's not applicable because those are already there. Any other comments? Any rec, any other recommendations? No. Are, are you good with the mounting? Okay, good. Uh, all in favor? I say yes. Aye, yes. And I'm going to give this to Meredith and 
Shannon, you can come in and sign it, right? Yep. So Shannon, um, it's up to you. You can either come into the office tomorrow and sign the recommendation form, or I can email it to you. Um, do you have a preference? Uh, yeah, if you could email it, that would be great. I'm okay. open tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, of course. Yes. <laughs> so I will email it to you. Um, okay. And then when you get a chance to sign it and send it back, um, and then we'll be able to get you your permit. And we can either mail the permit to you or you can come in and pick it up. Um, so we'll, or heck, I could just walk it over. Um, and and we'll figure that out when I when you email back the um, signed recommendation form so we can get that permit out the door. Okay. Okay. So I have to wait um, until I have the permit in hand to hang up the sign. Is that correct? Um, you're kind of supposed to. What time do you open tomorrow? No, it's okay. No. <laughs> no what time do you, What time do you open tomorrow? Uh, Eight o'clock. But I'll. I, if, I probably won't have time to do it tomorrow anyway. I'm just um, making sure that I know. Yep. You uh, can put. You can put anything you want inside your window. Yeah, I have it in the window now and okay. it's fine. Okay, so, um, you know, I'm I'm not gonna run around and, and, you know, ding you because you put it up, but what I'll do is before I leave here tonight, I'll email you this form so you can get it back so we can get the permit signed or out the door as soon as possible tomorrow, okay? Um, and I will try and oh, get the permit Oh, thank you, tomorrow. I really appreciate that. Okay. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks, everyone. But good You're luck welcome, with your jelly. Yeah, good, good luck. luck. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Okay. The next application is for 90 Berry Street. Uh, ADA ramp. Uh, if you need to, feel free to move that microphone between the two of you. So you can both you just pick it up and can lift it over the laptop and stick it between you. Awesome. Not, not Thank you. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Thanks. Oh, <laughs> okay. I'm Michael Curtis from Washington County Mental Health. Washington County owns a building and has for 25 years or so. It was uh, funded through VHCB. Um, before the pandemic, we were granted uh, VHCB monies to fix the roof and some other stuff and some CDBG money to uh, complete those repairs and also uh, make an accessible apartment on the first floor. And I'm Joel Page with Scott Partners Architects. And You're going to have to speak up or pull back. Okay. Hi, I'm Joel Page with Scott and Partners Architects, and we're the project architect assisting these guys. I walked by the building today, and it's a beautiful building. Yeah. It's getting better. Yeah. It's getting better. It's taken a while. Yeah. Looking at the building, standing on Barry Street, looking at the building, where do you project that the right ramp will go? Okay, if you go up the driveway <laughs> to the building, okay, um, there's you can see where people park that way. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. that side of the building. Okay, so it's not facing. It's not going to be on Barry Street then. No, that would okay. that would be more like a carnival ride than an ADA <laughs> ramp. Okay. <laughs> Okay. I can share a screen for just a second. I'm trying to figure out. It's going to take some funky maneuvering to share the different parts. Uh. This is looking like a, a wood framed ramp, basically pressure treated. Yep, pretty straightforward, simple, simple yep. construction. Concrete piers, you know. Yep. And then uh, I'm looking at uh, right. I'm looking at four sections, so I'm I'm only seeing 
handrail on one side, but so there would be a handrail yes. on the other side. Yeah, it's designed to meet ADA requirements. So yeah. a handrail on both sides, yeah. a little curb. You're putting the railing across the porch, right? Correct. So you basically where the parking area is, you'd have immediate access off the parking area to the beginning of the ramp. And uh, it's just going to be treated in what color? Um, I don't think we've decided on a color, but it would be coordinated with how we're going to paint the building. So probably if we're going to, I don't know, we haven't really talked no, about where we're going to. just painted. Yeah. So whatever, it was gray or something. So it, the, you said the building was just painted. So similar to these pictures. Right. So it'll be, it'll somehow coordinate with what the colors we've Probably got right the, now. Yeah. Same scheme. Right. Yeah. We got, that was done by the LED program a couple of years ago. Sorry, it's the paint job. Funky. Don't you have to wait a year when you're using pressure treated? Blender? You have to allow it to dry out. It doesn't necessarily have to be a year, but it has to get to a good acclimated point to accept paint. And uh, I look at the roof and I worry a little bit about snow landing on it. I can't exactly tell if they're dry, but it's outside the roof. Yeah, there is a gutter, but they will have to maintain it. You know, there will be potential for snow and uh gutter is right above the center of it right right i guess that's not our thing but that doesn't seem ideal to me it, uh, well it's the challenges we have <laughs> yeah i understand one of the things that uh, uh steve everett who's a chair sometimes suggests is using a metal grate when there's snow and water Mm -hmm. rather than pressure treated so that they just falls through yeah that's a much more expensive cost if we were going to do a whole run of it that's what we'd end up having to do so i think if these guys can you know do their diligence and do the maintenance required it should be are you going to put down any of those uh, traction stick on traction right thing? not at the moment um, but I guess we will see how the tenant is and then accommodate that as needed. Not, you know, it's like I said, it's not our yeah. no, it's good design questions. review. Usually, so, you know, follow the requirements of the ADA and then adapt as we need to per yeah. the person. Um, Eric, just a you know, you could give them the option to do that steel grading on the ramp if it ends up being something they can work into the budget and then they don't have to come back if they change that material. Yep. Okay, can do that. Is that okay? It just gives you an option if you can find a way to work it into a budget so it, it would then be less maintenance, potentially. Budget's a little thin. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. In case you found a miracle grant or donor somewhere, I just wanted to yeah. Make sure you had that option so you wouldn't have to come yeah. back and get another permit for it. Permit's good for two years. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions or anything? Nope. No. But I'm a big advocate for providing handicapped access uh, for a number of reasons. Yes. Us too. Thank you for doing Us that. Too. Okay, now I've got to find the right form. That one I just did in red, the few things that apply. Okay. Because there's only a few. This is for historic structures. You're not removing any historic materials. You're not impacting any character defining features, uh, or you're not causing any damage to historic materials. No. Uh, acceptable. And Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and uh, that's, this is acceptable. It's a handicap ramp, simple handicap ramp, perfect. And we got a lot of not applicable here. And then we get to architectural features. Architectural features are not limited to windows. Uh, shall be. Considered in the alteration of a building, well, you're really not altering the building. Uh, 
uh, I would say that's acceptable. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think simple solutions are almost always better. I do have one more comment after I flip the page. Sorry. Oh, um, did I miss one? No, no. he's looking at oh. the application. Oh, so. oh I, I did miss one. All trades oh. to buildings qualified by public safety code shall be designed to maintain the character of construction material. That's acceptable. So Ben still does have a question. And it's more just a comment regarding the 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 railing on the exterior of the ramp and all the the wooden pickets as it marches up the ramp um don't believe all those are required mm -hmm. by the time that you get to 30 inches then they're required right. but as both maintenance and visual lightness and less material to purchase mm -hmm. i don't think you need those i can agree and so, so we can we can simplify that. And I, that that could be, that could be uh, options. Yeah, pressure tree hasn't come down yet. No, and I think it just it like puts it. a lot of visual clutter on a beautiful, beautiful yeah, building yeah. that's unnecessary. I, I agree. So then I'm going to put that in as an option is just removing the railings. Yeah, you still need the handrails, but you don't need all the vertical. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you'll need the handrail because we're below 30 inches. You don't need a guardrail and we'll need a curb on the edge. Yeah. But you don't need all the, the four inch fall protection. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we'll have it's probably not going to save you enough money to put in the grading score. <laughs> <laughs> might, might not, but it will lessen some yeah. of the impact of. Maybe yeah, the more it would be more of a see through. Yeah. I've got the, the grading floor as an option and removing uh, verticals and the railings, limb, some of the verticals, I guess. Yeah, that way it just makes it resort to what building code requires versus making it look exactly like the rest of the railings of the building. Yeah. The, uh, I did forget one of the criteria, the porches and stairs. Uh, location of porch shall be placed and does not impact or undermine the original significant ornamentation of the building. No, stairs ramps shall be employed. Suitable detailing to connect and be compatible with the SARC. I did think it does that. Stairs and ramps, I think it's a good idea, though, to just treat, provide a little more transparency through there since it doesn't look like there's ever a railing on that porch. You don't need it above 30 in, below 30 inches, do you? No. Right. That's what I thought, yeah. Stairs and ramps should be designed in a manner of details and materials to provide the most sensitive and compatible structure that fits the building. That's all acceptable. Uh, I guess all in favor. Aye. 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 Okay, one of you needs to sign this. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, preferably someone with authority from the applicant. Applicant or owner, I guess. We'll get that out in the next day or two. Would you prefer it uh, mailed to you, or do you want somebody to email you and have you just come and pick it up? Um, the latter. Okay. I'll make sure to. Audra issues. She emails you. Uh, hold on. Okay. I have. Yes. I want to make sure I had your email address. Okay. Perfect. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. I appreciate you taking care of the building.
that's the end of the applications. We probably can't do the minutes, can we? I don't think so. No. I'm the only one here who was at that meeting. Hmm? I'm the only one here who was at that meeting. Okay. So. Uh, other business? Not for me. Uh, just a, a plea to anybody watching via IRCA uh, to, if you're interested in being on the design review committee, to please contact me. Um, we could use some additional members. The uh, only thing I guess I could have put it in the comments in the chair, but uh, get by the microphone. The uh, Historic Preservation Commission has been charged and received a grant for developing guidelines for the design review uh, committee. And we would, uh, anybody that wants to participate in that and members of the design review committee, particularly. We have uh, uh, hired Brandy Saxton to do uh, the work and uh, anything. I would certainly appreciate any input from particularly design review committee members that uh, uh, of what needs to be illustrated, you know, and any good pictures uh, of, uh, of things or what you feel the public needs the most information about. Yeah. You know, the next HPC meeting will be Tuesday, August 10th. Um, and we'll actually, that the plan is to be meeting with uh, Brandy and hashing out the um, table of contents and some lists of illustrations um, that she might be putting together as well as uh, photographs of buildings around Montpelier or other cities to work into the guidelines that are you know, illustrated for how to use the design review regulations. Um, so feel free to contact me if you want some other information but we would love to to see you um, and get your and looking, your input look, as we go along maximum per, per, participation because at this point there are four members there hopefully will there'll be four members of hpc as okay. of this wednesday okay. <laughs> our fourth so, member is going to be appointed hopefully and, this wednesday and since design review is the one that are going to be using these things any input would be appreciated Okay, since I can call a meeting to order, I can also cavil <laughs> adjournment. Oh, wow, all right. We didn't even have to second. We didn't have to motion. We didn't have to do anything. Just get that gavel just, out just... and we're done. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you, Eric.